this is Dick Yardley's new book, or the only book that I'm aware of, that he's put out. And it's a compilation of many years of research uh, in relation to the Australian political treason, treachery and sabotage. It's the usurping of the Australian government and the Australian people, or its national government, by a foreign um, private banking corporate corporation cartel. And with all the evidence that it looks like that's, that we've discovered, and with Dick's evidence here, this is an amazing amount of research, and this goes through all of the, the acts that's, uh, that he feels that have caused the, the problem to Australia. My research has been in the grammatical standing of the documents that uh, are used by the uh, Commonwealth of Australia Corporation, the, um, the United States Securities and Exchange Commission's subdivisions such as the Commonwealth of Australia, the State of Queensland, the State of New South Wales, Victoria, uh, South Australia, Western Australia, Australia, etc. All of these states are registered as nation states to the to the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. They're registered as companies, corporations, and because they are subdivisions of the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, they are foreign bodies that are acting as government agencies on Australian, on the lands of Australia. And the only way that we can be um, associated with those types of government, those foreign corporations, is by consenting to it or agreeing to it somehow or other, by allowing them or giving them the, the, the absolute consent for them to administer the, the uh, mineral and energy wealth of Australia. Now these things have happened in the past and there's a, a statement here by the propaganda um, minister for Hitler, Joseph Goebbels. And there's a couple of statements that I'm going to read that these people have done because they did the same thing to the people of Germany. They usurped a private foreign banking cartel corporation into the people, sold themselves as the de jure government of their, as their national government, but in fact they were a private water-based Vatican style governing system that had really very little to do with the um, the national running of the of the country, and probably in in that time, the national government was under such heavy um, debts, debt-ridden government, that Hitler's government sort of overrode everything. It came in as a as a private foreign corporation and administered the country. Uh, whether it was good or bad, I mean, at first it was good, but. Um, I think what happens to a lot of those type of things that uh, when the power goes to one's head or the wrong people get into government just as the Eisenhower warning was when he left office in the United States he said a warning that um, basically saying that the the military power of the United States was unbeatable and it's true it's it's a massive power it's an incredible strength but he warned that it was being usurped from within and this is what sort of happens with with our governments in the councils of government we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence whether sought or unsought by the military industrial complex the potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist we must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. We should take nothing for granted. Only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel 
the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals so that security and liberty may prosper together. You know, Dick Yardley has discovered blow by blow how our national government has been destroyed through this, how the constitution has been destroyed. But I have a feeling that nothing's been destroyed. It's just that we have left it. and We didn't know that we've left it. Now, that system, something happened in, tw in around 12.30. The, the, the Magna Carta was created in the, around the, in 12.15. I think there's some other dates there. But roughly between 12.15 and by 12.30, Accursius in the Hohenstaufen reign of Rome at that time, the emperors of Rome, they created, on behalf of the Pope, mind you, the, the, the Vatican, they created a thing called the Corpus Juris. And what they did, they didn't create it, but they perfected it from Justinian and um, the, I think the Roman god of wine f at 400 BC worked on a very similar trust law system. Um, these, this system has been around for many thousands of years and, it's, um, and they were not primitive. Even 2,000 years ago, 3,000, 5,000 years ago, Egypt, it was not a primitive society. Uh, even a lot of the, the uh, contracts for leasing arrangements when you go and lease a building or lease a, a market store the contracts you sign are over 5,000 years old they were written 5,000 years ago and still to, to this day their um, their contracts of leasing and so forth still exist today but in Hitler's time um, Joseph Goebbels made some strange statements and uh, Goring and Hitler did too because what they had to do was usurp their government over the top of the national government of the people. Propaganda, this is one of his statements, Goebbels state, statements, propaganda works best when those being manipulated are confident that they are acting on their own free will. So when you think you've got freedom, you have freedom to vote, you go to vote. I, it's, it's all right, I can vote him, him out or him in. But you don't have the freedom to pick or choose who is actually the candidate. You pick and choose what candidate they choose that will sit in power. But whether it be left, right, middle, um, Labour, Liberal or Democrat or Republican, whatever. They all work for the one same corporation company, which is a subdivision of the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, which is the United States Federal Reserve, which is really governed by the City of London, and which is also governed by the debtor, first debtor of the Vatican, which is probably the Rothschild, the Rothschild dynasty, which is probably the real true Roman emperors of today. Um, there's a couple of other statements. So, what Goebbels was doing, is he was the, propag the propaganda minister for the Hitler regime. He was the one that sold their system to the people. Hitler's statements, to conquer a nation first disarm its citizens. And you're going to start to see a lot of similar things that are happening here. Another Hitler statement. The government is lucky that the people never think. <laughs> this is um, a statement by Goring and he was one of the, the head um, Hitler's gang. <laughs> Naturally, the common people don't want war, neither in Russia, nor in England, nor in America, nor for that matter, even in Germany. That is understood, but the people can always be brought to the bidding of the leaders. That is easy, he says. All you have to do is tell them that they are being attacked 
and denounce the pacifists for the lack of patriotism and exposing the country to danger. If you think about what's happening to our country today, the same thing's happening. The conflict by introducing two different types of uh, Christian, a Christian system and then a, a Muslim style system as one, where they used to be separate countries and they used to work quite well as separate countries and there's a lot of respect. But when you start mixing these two together, that's the conflict that they are creating. But what they are really doing is, is the, the Muslim system really the enemy? Or are they being portrayed or being put in there to, that we assume that they're the enemy, when really we've got to look at who's actually behind putting them in there? And when you look at our governments of today, our usurped our private foreign corporations are registered to the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, that bank, the US Federal Reserve Bank, run by the Rothschilds and by the City of London, that's really run by the Vatican, who is the first debtor of man in a religious sense. You know, who is the one behind trying to create all this conflict? We all know that money is generated from wars. We don't want war. No one wants war. But governments and banking cartels love war. And I'll explain another reason why they love war in, in, in a minute. Another Goebbels statement. They can never hide the truth, no matter how, how hard they try. They, there will come a day when all the lies will collapse under their own weight and the truth will triumph again. So the, 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 the men that were running this Hitler regime, they certainly knew that they only had a time span to usurp their military foreign dictatorship over the people. It's a lifespan because people will start to wake up. They get over all the glossiness, all the fanfare. By the time they've gotten through that, it's they've been disarmed, it's too late, and they're full on head into war with their properties and their homes being destroyed. They don't even know what's going on. Another very interesting statement by Joseph Goebbels. Ah, propaganda was based around this famous quote. If you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. That's true too. The lie can be maintained only for such a time as the state can shield the people from the political, economic and or military consequences of the lie. It has thus become virtually important for the state to use all of its powers to repress dissent. For the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie and thus by extension the truth is the greatest enemy of the state that's Goebbels again a propaganda minister the man one of the men so close to Hitler it wasn't funny Goebbels again a lie told once remains a lie but a lie told a thousand times becomes the truth Joseph Goebbels So, war is big business. And the strange part about governments and getting you to become a citizen of their corporation that gives them the equitable title and the right to administer really comes from the Vatican and the Bible because in Article 126 of Genesis, God granted dominion, which means the absolute authority. Dominion is the highest of authority. There's nothing greater than that. It's the major majority authority. God granted dominion to man over land, air, sea, 
and the thing that creepeth the thing that creepeth up from below and in the Latin dictionaries surname means the thing that creepeth or the thing that creepeth up from, from below so man has been granted by the God of existence authority the full authority over land air sea and the surname now in 1230 AD after the Magna Carta when the Corpus Juris was created they created the surname because when Justinian did it there was no choice of being the debtor or creditor I think the only people that could escape the Justinian the Justinian um, plundering of of Rome was to go back to Christianity it's the only thing they could do was to leave the state and try and go back to Christianity but he's still killed and murdered um, hundreds of thousands of of people so in 1230 Accursius recreated the Corpus Jur Juris or I should say perfected the Corpus Juris which is really the jurisdiction of the debtors the jurisdiction of the dead and in the Adam and Eve um, story it is the house of knowledge the tree of knowledge the house of the debtor it is the jurisdiction or the legal system that exists in the tree of knowledge the tree of life is the house of the creditor it's got nothing to do with the, the corpus juris that is probably the uh, the common law of the land the the law of the um the magna carta the the law dealing with land which is eden which is not cast off into the sea whereas the corpus juris was the law of the sea but because they could not force someone to leave the land or leave the creditor or, or leave the, the standing of the creditor and join the standing of the debtor then they deceived man into doing it by offering them the surname which is that's the reason why you have two birthing certificates you have the state birth certificate which is really the birth of the family name or the surname which in out of John Henry Doe that is the birth of the Doe Trust not the name the Doe Trust it's it's a trust law system a three-way trust debtor creditor and administrator so the state birth certificate is the birth of Doe Trust the office of the debtor but this this the certificate of birth which is the certificate that is set up on your registration date which is in my case a month later but in your case or other cases it could only be a few days but it's never done on the same day and that is the birth of the creditor trust which is the John Henry the Christian name trust so the John Henry name is actually been split into two entities that's what the extract is all about where you've been split into two, into two which means really divide and conquer <laughs> so when they created this this corpus juris that's what you have been born into as a child and as a child up to the age of majority up to the age of 21 you remain in that being protected by the state and the state at that time was your parents because by the time they passed the age of majority they stayed in the debtor state they didn't leave the debtor state at the age of majority and go over to the creditors they stayed in the debtor state they had the choice of going to the creditor state but they remained holding the surname and remained in the debtor state and of course then registered you into the state for you to be looked after until you reach the age of majority which re which really is which is the age of 21 but the word majority majority means major the absolute control the, the highest of authority which is dominion now the states 
the foreign states from the water, from the Vatican, because the Vatican handles all of the laws of water. It is Mary. Mary means water, the sea. And the Virgin Mary, Virgin means um, girl. Virgin is girl. And Mary means the sea, girl of the sea, which is the Vatican. So when you turn 21, you have the choice of remaining with the state and turning from a child into a thing called an adult. But that word adult comes from adulterer, adultery. And that means that the word adultery is means the worshipping of another deity apart from where you come from or the God of existence, the first God, the real God. So when you hit 21 and you remain in the state and you don't leave and go back to the house of the creditor, if you don't drop the surname and go back to your Christian name and if you don't know your date of birth of that Christian trust, then you won't find it. You will remain in the house of the debtors. And what happens there is that the usurping military, which is really the administrator, where you can go back and direct the administrator, the, the administration, who are the magistrates that sit up on the bench, rather than you go back and administer and administrate them or uh, direct them on what you want done with your estate. If you remain in the house of the debtors, then the magistrates remain as the holder of the equity, the holder of the dominion which means the holder of the complete authority over your estate. And that's why the police and the Vatican and the magistrates hold so much power over you. It's not that they stole it off you. It's that you did not claim your standing of that God granted you, which was dominion, which is the power over the credit estate. You didn't, you left, you remained in the state of the debtors. You remained in the tree of knowledge rather than turning 21 and, and being able to step across as the director of your estate, of your world, of, of, your, of your lot in life, what's been granted to you, which is the mineral and energy wealth, all the wealth of the world, the mining uh, royalties, everything that's come out of the ground that goes into your account and it still does today your account is full of it but you don't know how to get how to get there and one of the things that these people Goebbels and Hitler and Stalin and many of the military takeover people that have taken over our our land, our lands and country they don't they do know how this works and whether or not they were just the puppets of the banking system but the banking system itself which is really the V which is the valley and the V is the Vatican and the Vatican is the first bank it's the world bank the very word means it that I can means holder I can and it has the knowledge to set up or to set governments up to come in and usurp over your lands. They're foreign governments, they're overseas governments. They don't come from land, they come from the water, they come from the Vatican. The Vatican is the girl of the sea. It doesn't have land. So it knows how to usurp over your dominion to access your authority. But it does it through military style tactics such as what Hitler did and what's happening to us in Australia today. They slowly get rid of the, the de jure governments and usurp them with private foreign banking cartels all just for making money and to siphon the value and, and the, um, the, the mineral and energy wealth from land to siphon it over into the water, into the sea, into their corporations, into the, into the maritime and the admiralty law system 
from common law into admiralty, from common law into maritime law. So it's really, they are pirate ships raping and plundering the values of our lands. Now in Queensland and in Australia, the biggest effect that we have are our courts and our police. Whereas our Queensland police in Queensland, they used to be the police that were, they were proper policemen that were there to serve and protect the, the people, the nationals of this country. We put them there, we elected them. But the police of today serve to keep the citizens of the foreign countries in line. And when you've become, when you've changed from being a national of Australia to a citizen of the Commonwealth of Australia being a private foreign corporation that is a subdivision of the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, which is a foreign body deriving from a different district, a different territory, then those police and you, as citizens of that, you have committed, probably unknowingly, like Dick Yardley says, an act of treason. You serve a foreign deity. That's what the whole point of becoming a, an adult is all about. An adult is someone that's committing adultery. And adultery is serving a foreign deity. You've left your dominion. Now, one would think that the Queensland Police would be a legitimate um, organisation. And only a few days ago, on, around the 8th of the 6th, 2018, the head of the Queensland, uh, the sergeant at Queensland there, made claim that the Queensland Police were a power military organisation. And I said, I don't think you are. But just to, just to try and understand what a power military organisation is, this came from his words, these are the things he said. Military power, potential consists in the resources that a nation state can mobilise against other nation states for the purpose of military deterrence, defence and war. It is defined as the ability to affect the behaviour of other nation states through actual or threatened exertion of force, which is terrorism. So he claimed that he was a military power, um, military organisation. But on Dun and Bradstreet, when I did the checking on Dun and Bradstreet, I found that the Queensland Police and all of them, the Queensland Police, Bank Limited, you know, Queensland Police Service, Queensland Police Service, Queensland Police Service, Queensland Police Service, uh, Northern Region, Queensland Police Service, Central Traffic Support, Far North, Northern Region, Industrial Relations Branch, North Coast Region, South Eastern Region, all of the Queensland Police entities were registered as a non-organisation on Dunham Bradstreet. And being a non-organisation was strange because the police claimed that they were an organisation. An organisation is a group of people with a particular purpose such as business or government departments. The synonyms are company, firm, concern, operation, cooperation, uh, a group, establishment, consortium, conglomerate, combined, uh, syndicate, body, agency, federation. This is what they've been calling themselves. But when the word non is placed before it, it means not organised. And the antonym of organisation is disorganised. So when we go and have a look at the, the when we go and have a look at this organisation
these are the synonyms of a disorganisation or a non-organisation, which is telling you that it's not organised. So the Queensland Police Service is a non-organisation. Uh, in contrary to what the sergeant of the Queensland Police told me, he either lied or he doesn't know what's going on. A disorganisation is a foul up, a mix up, anarchy, chaos, confusion, a derangement, a disarray, disjointedness, a disorder, a disreputation, a dissolution, incoherence, rat's nest, a screw up, an unholy mess. Which is what it is legally saying on Dun and Bradstreet. So our Queensland Police Service, and this would also relate to all state police around Australia and probably in the United States and all of them that are subdivision um, entities that are upholding the United States Securities and Exchange Commission and the United States Federal Reserve, which is really, you know. Now, the, just the antonyms of disorganised are on on here a disorganisation disproportion or an imbalance so a disproportion these are, these are other synonyms of a disorganisation is the same a difference a discrepancy disparity inadequacy inequality insufferency irregularity the word imbalance Ine inequity inequitable um, a shortcoming disproportion ne neverness e un sorry unevenness so we've got a Queensland Police Service that are telling us that it is an organisation but the Dun and Bradstreet are telling us that it's not an organisation at all. It's saying that it is registered as a non-organisation, which means disorganised in law. What Dick Yardley says in this book is the same thing. It's He's gone blow by blow how it's been usurped. And my research is just going to the grammatical standing of their documents, of who they are, are they registered, where are they registered, who are they registered to, and what are they registered as. And it's coming to the conclusion that getting back to this statement here of Goring, that I think it's in here. If you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. The lie can be maintained only for such a time as the state can shield the people from the potential economic and or military consequences of the lie. Now, what's the consequences, according to Dick and according to all of the statutes in here, is that when the Queensland Police have joined another deity or another foreign nation, and they are acting against the people of Australia by disarming the people of Australia and then becoming belligerent and forcing us to pay the debts of a foreign nation while the foreign nation rapes and plunders our steel, our um, mineral and energy wealth, then those acting on behalf of the agencies that are forcing Australians into um, surrendering their, their uh, dominion, their right over this, uh, over the lands and the mineral and energy wealth at the point of a gun and at the point of terrorism acts by the Queensland Police and lies and um, conspiracies, well not conspiracies but um, uh, by conspiring with each other to bring false charges against people 
as what they did to me, or for looking, and as what they did to a lot of people. Anyone that's looking for the truth winds up in prison because they don't want the truth out. But Joseph Goebbels, even in the Hitler regime, they all warn about it. They can only get in and out as quick as they can before people start to wake up. And in this case, whether or not the United States heads of these companies have flown the coop, but have left the Queensland police and its, uh, its military back in here to deal with the mess, then there sure is going to be a mess. Uh, they, Goebbels again, they can never hide the truth no matter how hard they try, and they can't. Because it's only a matter of time when we start going through all the books, through the acts, and through the grammatical standings of their, their documents, how they've written and used the English languages, and they haven't used, well, they've actually used those languages against us. They can never hide the truth, no matter how hard they try. They will, there will come a day when all the lies will collapse under their own weight and the truth will triumph again. Well, all I can do to the Queensland police, to government agencies, and to um, all state police and federal police and any other agency that's um, that's registered with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, and that's easy to find too because the United States Securities and Exchange Commission have not hidden anything. They put everything in the public domain because they know that you just won't look. But when you do look, you'll see it all there. They haven't hidden anything. So what is happening is that when courts police, governments, utter any of their documents or any of their acts or any of their laws in public, they are uttering a counterfeit because everything that they have done according to the grammatical standing and by using um, debased Latin on their documents, which is a criminal act in itself, have created counterfeit documents, counterfeit money, counterfeit charges, counterfeit courts. So you have agreed to enter into this counterfeit, even though you didn't know what you were doing at the time and the schools that they created um, didn't teach us the fraud that they're administering. They actually took out grammar and um, Latin from the schools in 1966 in order to make sure that you were dumbed down and you could not see the fraud on their documents. But it has come to the light, just like people like Dick Yardley again, that's done all of this research, and people like many of us researchers that have looked into this, we've finally found the truth. And the grammatical standing of any of their documents, when they use all this all uppercase text on it, uh, renders counterfeit documents. And the only way that they can confer these documents and these charges to you is through the mail through a sealed, signed, which is the sign language, sealed in an article, and delivered, which is delivery. And if it, it, can't, it cannot get to you in any other way, it means that police now on the side of the road can no longer issue you a ticket because the minute the police officer hands you a ticket, he's uttering a counterfeit. He's been caught out just like all of those military governments are. The reason why this new government, uh, this Third World War, that apparently, according to this document here, uh, started in um, 1953, they called it a quiet war. A, a quiet wars, a quiet weapons for silent wars, and silent weapons for quiet wars. They created something that was, here it is, silent weapons for quiet wars. You can uh, download this on the net. It is about 30, 32 something pages long. It's, it's a hard read, a difficult read, but uh, it outlines the protocol or the guidelines or the manual on how, they are, how they've conducted this Third World War. And because it's a silent war and started, you didn't know it was happening. But according to these people, it is um, a war that was started by the banks again in 1953, as I said. The reason why war is so much um, 
that made so much money for the bankers is because when you turn 21 and you don't claim back your estate, your dominion over your share of the country that you were born on as a national, when you turn 70 or the, the age when the trust expires, if you don't have a will and or testament in the correct name and the correct date of birth, they, the banking administrator, the foreign administrator, claims a right, a legal right to keep the estate if a will and testament has not been found. So what they do is they keep you in the house of the debtors so you never ever return to the house of the creditor in order to make the will so that you can pass on to who you want to your estate, your share of your authority over the mineral and energy wealth of the lands. And what they do is they create wars while you're young and while you're gullible and while you're not even um, you're not aware of any of this and they get you off to war you go. For every soldier, for every man and or woman that dies without making a, a will, your share of your mineral and energy wealth goes to the bank, to the US Federal Reserve. And that US Fed Federal Reserve, people say that the bank um, writes up promissory notes out of thin air. It does not. It uses your authority over the mineral and energy wealth. And when you finally die, or if you don't pay the debts back, the bank accesses your right, your dominion, your ownership over the commonwealth, the commonwealth of, of your land. It accesses your authority. It administers your authority. It takes your authority because you gave it to them and you remained as a, in the house of the debtor after you turned 21. And that's why this wars go on. They make money. When you, when you die, they take your estate, the estate that you didn't know existed. And that probably adds up into the millions of dollars per head of man for every man and woman that your ownership of the land that you, you were born on. And you must admit that Australia is, being, is one of the richest um, mineral wealthy, mineral and energy wealth countries in the world. It has that much gold, gas, uh, mineral and energy wealth, coal and oil. That it's, uh, it goes on for over a thousand years as it stands, even if we burn oil as it is now without finding any new deposits. We have enough energy to last a thousand years. So that's why the, the Federal Reserve, the United States um, Securities and Exchange Commission and the Vatican want all this hidden. That's why they conduct these wars. But in this silent war, they silently came here, they silently plundered us, and they silently disarmed us. But I guess in a way they will have to silently leave, hopefully. But just remember, the warning to the Queensland police and to state police around Australia and probably around the world. According to Pick Yardley and all the old common law laws that are still in place you just left but treason and treachery are still life imprisonment um, charges and if you are operating against a national on Australian soil but you were born on Australia then you are serving a foreign deity a foreign land and you are aiding and abetting the theft of the mineral and energy wealth of our lands for another entity. So I would suggest from these days on and into the future that you be very careful when you're approaching people on the road, not because anyone's violent, but for your own safety in relation to the documents and what you're doing. Don't hand over anything don't make any rash decisions on a person or a man that you see. If you come across someone that has a strange name, you can't find him on the system, or his car doesn't add up, or something like that, you know where he lives, come back later and do what you have to do. But walk away, stand down immediately, and let that man or let that person go. Because only you only have the ability to deal with the persons that are within the jurisdiction of the District of Columbia, 
the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, the subdivisions of the US Federal Reserve, uh, whether they be the Commonwealth of Australia and the state of Queensland, uh, Queensland Treasury Corp and the rest of the states. If they are registered there, you do have the right to uh, administer power over them, but it's only a matter of time when they wake up and find out that uh, they've been duped. They've been deceived through grammatical trickery and deceit caused by magistrates and lawyers. They shouldn't even be there. They have signed their oaths or sworn their oaths to the city of London, which is the Vatican. The word Canberra means Londini, which is London. Canberra means London in Latin. So you are serving London, that's fine, but you keep within the jurisdiction and within the people and the persons that are, are subject to your laws. You do not force anyone to join. You come across someone that you can't find in your system, walk away, stand down, because you are looking at the most hideous crime, which is treason and treachery against your own land. Uh, your own stupidity that you've joined these other countries, ignorance is no excuse to the law. There's, um, there's a maxim. I'll leave you with this. It's a Roman maxim. It says, um, let those who let themselves be deceived, be deceived. But Christ says, love your neighbor in a spirit of brotherhood. So what that means is that if your brother is stupid enough or gullible enough to be deceived, don't deceive him, help him. So the Roman maxim states that you can deceive your brother, but Christ says never deceive. So if you join Rome and you, you go down that path, you are not with Christ. And it's only through Christ that you'll be saved. He said that through his name only. And his name is the creditor.